Ranch. The ranch home originated in the southwest United States around the 20th century, but it descended from styles that had been around much longer, such as the Spanish colonial. This single level home is extremely versatile and quickly spread across the United States, even being featured in westerns that were popular at the time. In fact, this home style was so heavily featured in western movies that people who moved into these homes, even if they were nowhere near the west, would often decorate its sort of western theme, which I just think is awesome. With that being said, this ranch is literally as American as apple pie. Well, not literally. I mean, apple pie was invented in England in the 1380s, and most of the world didn't even know that the continent existed yet, um, and apple pie wasn't even popularized in America until World War II, which is coincidentally actually also when this home became popular, and with all that being said, Welcome back to Building Like a Nerd. Now there are technically five subtypes, possibly more, but five that I found of the ranch home. However, a lot of them have very, very similar aspects and we're just going to be sort of doing a generic ranch today. Pretty much every ranch home you're going to see is going to be a single story, although most of them, if they live in climates where this um, makes sense, will have a basement. These basins are often finished and occasionally even walkout basements, which we're not doing today, but if you'd like to see how I can do that in a later video, that's just very much not beginner friendly. Those finished basements do add a lot of usable floor space though, so even though the footprint appears quite small, these homes can be quite large. The overall shape of a ranch is going to be very simple most of the time. You're either going to have a rectangle, a rectangle with a bump out on one side, or a rectangle with a bump out on two sides. Basically a rectangle, an L, or a very fat little U. The very simplistic style, family-oriented living, front and back porches, open floor plans, and generally the affordability of these homes is really what made them so very popular in post-World War II America. In fact, one of the reasons that these homes exploded so much in popularity is that soldiers returning home from World War II received very generous home loans. There was a housing shortage from the Great Depression because, you know, depression, and a lot of these soldiers opted to have ranch homes built for them and their new families. I have a quote here from Alan Hess who wrote The Ranch House. He says, while architects in Western Europe and the Soviet Union met the need by building high-rise apartment blocks, the need of all these soldiers returning home, Americans created a consumer product that people wanted to buy. And that was the ranch style house. It deserves respect because it solved the housing crisis of America in the mid-century. I just think that's so cool. I wanted to honor the more Western roots of this style by building in Del Sol Valley, which is basically California, and it is the world that comes with the Get Famous pack. However, I will just be using base game today and this build could fit on a 20 by 30. The 30 by 40 lot that I'm building on today is simply the smallest residential lot in this world, so it's kind of what I'm stuck with. First, you're going to start with an 18 by 9 rectangle, which if you're following along on a 20 by 30 lot will just fit right smack dab in the middle with one tile on either side, like that. Starting in this corner, we are going to draw a 6 by 4 room, a 2 by 4 room, and then a 6 by 6 room. Section off a little 1 by 4 area right here, that is going to be for our basement stairs. On this side, we're going to draw a 6 by 3 room, a 2 by 4 room, and a five by four room. So there you can see we have our little sort of U shape going. I'm going to add a little wall right here and that is our main level floor plan. Now basements are super common in these builds and if you wanna add a basement, just click this basement tool and then drag out under that same area that was sort of our main rectangle that we started with. Now you have a basement. I'm going to remove this wall right here and add some stairs. And I know that they are three tiles in so I should be able to page down and go three tiles in. And there are my stairs. We're also going to add a front porch. I'm going to add it like this and sort of make a little L shape because I want to add some flower bushes here. And then off the back of the house, I'm going to extend the porch all the way, including the master bedroom and add an additional exit there. And then make it about five tiles deep. And there's your floor plan. You'll enter off this front porch into the main living room with of course the stairs right here. A child has joined us. Put the kitchen over here, dining room over here, a sliding glass door here and here. Of course, we'll see this all through, but that's really how easy it is to pull together a ranch. If you wanted to expand this a bit, it'd be super easy to simply pull this hallway through and add a few more bedrooms or take advantage of the basement space. Because this is not a walkout basement, I would probably not recommend using this space for, I'm actually going to delete this um, part right here because it's under the garage and you don't typically have basements under the garage for structural reasons. Um, anyway, I'm not going to be using this as sort of like finished bedroom space because there aren't any spaces to add windows. Um, I do want to keep this a beginner friendly build and that's a little bit more difficult to do. There are kind of like two ways to do it, but my point is if you'd like to see something like that, 
with a walkout basement or windowed basement or whatever, you can let me know in the comments. I do have one empty slot still available in the schedule, and I'd be happy to fill it with a more complicated ranch design since this is like, it's like the bread slice of houses. It's so simple and yet it can support so many different lifestyles. Anyway, I would recommend using this space for um, office space, for gaming, for a movie room. Enough about the basement, let's do a roof. I'm going to start with a hip roof on the largest portion of the build, and then I'm going to pitch it down to about half of um, what it started at. You can pull the eaves out one or two, depending on the overall size and style of branch uh, that you're going for. And then I'm going to use gabled roof pieces on the front. I want to match the pitch with my hip roof and make sure that I pull it all the way in. And then I can copy the same roof piece and place it right over here. If you want your front sort of deck area to be covered, you can use a half gable roof. Make sure that you pitch it down and then cover as much of your front deck as you want to be covered. The back deck can be covered partially, covered completely, or not covered at all. This would be a good place to add some of these sort of awnings over your sliding doors. I think I will add just a little bit of a cover right over where I'm going to put my door. So I'll add my sliding glass door right here and then just that little bit of cover right above it. The ranch home is pretty much always going to be using short wall height and it really isn't going to be raised that much off the ground. Probably about here, maybe a little higher. This is going to depend largely on your world. Um, as we discussed in past videos, if you live in a world with a more dry climate, you're going to notice that a lot of the builds will be directly on the ground. Um, this is to allow for basically geothermal cooling. Um, the ground will help keep the floor cool and all that jazz. However, if you live in a more wet climate, you're going to see the elevation significantly higher because flooding. Now you can see we didn't actually need that little tile like I thought we did, so I can actually push that back and keep the space in the garage. Or extend the master bathroom. And I think I like that better. Now I need a little bit more space, so I'm just going to move this lot real quick. Just push it back like this. Because I want to talk about adding a driveway. Yes, this is beginner friendly. This is pretty much the easiest terrain manipulation you can do. Grab your flattened terrain tool, your square brush, and make it about as wide as your garage. You want to make it soft and slow, especially if you are a bit newer to this. And then starting inside your garage, you're going to bring up the level of your terrain in front of your little deck and the garage out a few tiles like this. And you're going to make sure that the front of your a uh, plot of land is level as well. Sometimes you get these weird bugs, that's just the game. Then you can grab your smooth terrain and, well, smooth some of the terrain. This can be easier to see if you turn the um, shiny green grid off by pressing G. You can then find more troublesome areas like right here, so I can smooth that down a little bit. Or over here, I can smooth that down a little bit. If you notice your foundation is showing again, just grab the flattened terrain tool, start inside your garage, and raise it until it is hidden once again. If you're struggling to see how the terrain is moving, you can go ahead and paint into your driveway. Grab your square brush, make it almost all the way to the um, more hard end of softness, and then just paint your driveway in. This will help you see if there are any weird angles or anything. I don't appear to really have any, which is great. And then you can also paint in a little walking path. We'll work on this a little bit more when we get into the landscaping and everything, but that's a really great way to be able to add a garage and still have your foundation. It's a really easy way to practice terrain manipulation and I hope you give it a shot. I also want to show you how to make a really easy fake garage door. Start by pushing this roof back a bit and then grab your flat square and place it just right there in the middle. We're going to make this four tiles wide. And then immediately you're going to grab the jutting exterior trim. This will be whatever color you want your trim to be. I'm going to be sticking with white and place it on that floor. Then you can put your roof back. Trust me, this is going to be worth the process. Next, take these little, however you say that, round columns and place one on either side. This clapboard clash, get a nice light color. Paint that in and finally grab the light box window and place it about here. Now, without move objects, without any fancy cheats, and literally in a matter of seconds, you have what looks like a perfectly functional garage door. Now it's not, and you're going to want to add a little door to the side, but doesn't that just like add so much to the build? I saw somebody do this 
I think a couple months ago at this point on TikTok, and I just thought it was so cool. I don't even remember who it was, otherwise I would give them credit for it, but this is so much better than trying to dig through debug to get a garage door that's not even going to work. It even looks like it's sort of like set into the wall. Anyway, garage doors are cool. Let's finish up the rest of the siding real quick. For siding on a ranch, you can use brick, siding, stucco, stone, or any combination of those. Because I'm using this wide siding here for the garage door to help maintain that illusion, I'm not going to use the wide siding anywhere else, and I'm actually going to start with some brick. Using this brick that has sort of has the um, like trim on the corners could be a great option. You can also pick a corresponding sort of half bricked wall if you want to break up some of those brick lines. And you can match the siding to finish up the roof piece right here. Oh rats, I accidentally painted in my garage. Shingles can be pretty much whatever you want. I highly recommend moving away from the default. Switching out your shingles from the default is pretty much the same as switching out from drywall or switching out from this high quality construction concrete. It's just going to look so much better. Because there's already quite a bit of white trim on the build, I'm going to grab this square roof trim in white. And now we should be able to finish up the doors and windows. The front door isn't going to be anything too fancy. I like this one. And your windows are going to be fairly large. I think these are really nice, so I'm going to grab a couple of these for the front right there. And I actually want them a little closer together, so what I'm going to do is press F5, and that's going to let me sort of scooch the windows without having to turn on move objects. This is a bedroom, and I don't want the window to be quite as large because, you know, privacy. So I think I'm just going to grab this little window like this, and I'm going to move inside to place the rest of my windows so I can see how they fit in the rooms. I can actually space these windows up pretty evenly in these bedrooms. I'm going to use this as a light box window for the bathroom here, just to keep it small and private. But then use this same window in the kitchen. And I want a sliding door in the bedroom, so I think I'm pretty much just going to mimic this exact same layout here. Once again, add a small window in the bathroom for light, but privacy. For the foundation, since I'm using brick up here, I'm going to use brick once again. And let's take a look at adding some flooring and wallpapers. I suppose we can add some inside doors too. Nothing special here, just wherever they're going to make the most sense. As far as floors go, you're going to see mostly lighter colored floors. If you want it to feel more old and decrepit, this floor would be a great option. Um, although a lot of these homes were fairly well maintained as they've been sort of passed down through generations. So something oak colored would work really well. I want concrete still in the garage, but not this concrete because your Sims will complain about it being unfinished. So I'm going to grab the high style concrete. Same for the basement. And if you want the basement walls to kind of appear unfinished, using some brick or plaster would be a great option. This one doesn't look very structurally sound because the bricks aren't like layered, but it does sort of give that cinder block feel that is very, very common in basements, especially here in the Midwest. If you want it to feel more updated and modern, of course, just grabbing some plain old wallpaper will do you just fine. But when they were originally created, it was very common to have patterned wallpapers, especially in the kids' rooms. This is a time when westerns were really very popular. Um, this is dinosaurs, but pretend it's cowboys. So printed and patterned wallpapers um, or floral wallpapers like this were super common. And you may still find them in some of your grandparents' houses today. For the patios, you could easily use concrete, concrete slabs, the same wood you used inside, bricks, really whatever's going to make the most sense either for the neighborhood, for where the foundation is, and or for whatever reference image you may be using. The kitchen is going to open directly into the rest of the living space. I'm choosing to put mine right here. I added this little wall right here to sort of give the fridge a more built-in feel. And I'm just going to use these lovely beige counters today. I'm going to throw down some upper cabinets. Once again, I'm going to be using these custom cabinets. I can add a short cabinet, a full cabinet, a short cabinet, and then this end cabinet for a little bit of variety. I'm going to add in a nice beige range hood to match with everything else. And if you really wanted to get the most out of your little kitchen space, you can add a nice little island. By grabbing the left end piece and the right end piece, you could also use two of these corner pieces, which would sort of give it more of a bar look all the way around. And of course, allow you plenty of space to add stools for a breakfast nook, although probably not right there. A little dining table would fit in great right here and your living space will be in this area. If you have a pack that has any sort of like coat closet or anything, this would be a really good place to have that, just sort of on the wall there. Bathrooms aren't going to be anything too special. I have to scooch the window over or raise it, but if you add a shower right here, you can add a little sink and a toilet with no problems at all. We can make the grown-ups bathroom a little bit fancier. Adding in one of these more square tubs helps it feel much more built in, and you can even add a full tile wall. There's still plenty of room over here for a his and hers vanity, a toilet, 
and maybe even one of these little bathroom tower things that we all forget about. Well, I forget about anyway. That's like a pretty nice little bathroom, right? Oh, this could be a shower too, but I like this better. Before we finish up with landscaping, I just want to recommend this channel to you. Obviously you're already watching it, and if you've made it this far, clearly you find this content valuable, you're enjoying yourself, and you should so totally definitely subscribe. As always, I recommend landscaping with move objects on. If you don't know how to do that, just hit Control shift c and type in bb.moveobjectson and you should get a confirmation code. Something super simple and very suburban would work great for this build style. However, the ranch that I'm most familiar with is one that my grandmother lived in for several years and she had just the most amazing flower bed. So I'm actually going to be baking um, a flower bed here just because that's sort of what ranch homes remind me of now is extensive gardens. So I'm going to do that. If you want to create a diverse flower bed, you can use as many plants as you want, but here are a few pointers. If you want it to feel slightly more controlled, use as many plants as you want, but stick with just one color swatch of each plant. You can mix and match the sizes by using the bracket keys to scale up and down, which can add some texture and depth. And if you want it to feel a little bit more wild and free, throw in some additional color swatches as well. I always recommend working in odd numbers. This just is going to feel more organic and sporadic and has less chance of turning out uh, being a square. Also want to add some plants to the other side of your garage. Landscaping on terrain slopes can be kind of tricky. You can cover it up a lot by using some of these lower lying plants and just sort of stacking them. Or you can ignore it and just have a good time. I think I'm going to use this lavender to sort of line my path. I'm going to do that by holding shift and alt so that I can place multiple plants and rotate them to line up with the edge of my path fairly exactly. And I'll place a little clump over here as well so it doesn't feel too out of place. I wanna add a little bit more height to this garden so I'm going to grab some of the knotgrass grass and add that more toward the back although I will add a couple of scaled down versions toward the front as well. Looks like it's time for rocks. The mountains back here are sort of in these three colors, so I'm just going to pick blue, maybe the red. Again, you can scale these up or down with the bracket keys, which can really add some great layers. And of course, you can go with multiple different colors of rock if you want to as well. I wanna add a little bit more color and variety to this, so I'm going to go and grab some flowers, like actual flowers from this flower category. And now all we have to do is add some terrain paint. We already painted the driveway in, but to soften up those edges a little bit, I'm going to grab a very small brush and paint it with just a bit of the Smarter Starter soil, bringing my brush up pretty soft and then just bringing it right down the edge. That just gives it a little bit of dimension. I'm gonna bring my brush up a bit to actually paint under all of my plants, rocks, and foundation. I do recommend using a slightly smaller brush for going along your foundation. Oh look, I forgot to add steps off the back porch. All right, we'll finish up the backyard in just a second because, um, oops, I got so distracted with the flowers. I suppose we should talk for at least a couple of minutes about the backyard. Well, with this being a family-friendly build, you're probably going to want to rail in any decks that have any sort of elevation, um, you know, to like keep the kids from falling off or whatever. And speaking of kids, playground equipment would be a great addition to this backyard. Now with the base game, we are pretty limited. Uh, we basically have monkey bars, but we do have a telescope now, so that's fun. It would also not be uncommon to actually have your backyard fenced in for privacy. Don't know what gate is supposed to go with this fence. Maybe this one doesn't make the most sense, but none of these make sense either. So that's what we're gonna go with. You can also add terrain paint under your fences, under any sort of structures in the backyard to help them look a little bit more played with. Add sort of worn in the dirt walking paths. You can bring in some of those very same plants from your front yard if you want the space to feel a little bit more used and finished. And now I think the backyard's actually like taken care of. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Hopefully you enjoyed my interpretation of the classic American ranch. I genuinely have a new appreciation for the ranch style after reading up on the history, and while it's still not a style I would probably build for myself, like in real life, I could definitely see making some of these in a future save file. If you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out the rest of the series. I'm calling it Building Like a Nerd, and we're just working together to appreciate the residential styles all around us. I'm focusing largely on American homes because I myself am an American, but I am hoping to continue this series indefinitely and expand and just explore all sorts of architecture. I am genuinely super pumped about this series. You could also check out the video that YouTube thinks you'll most enjoy, and with all of that, thank you again so much for building with us today, and I'm very much looking forward to building with you all again tomorrow. Bye!